Okay, in the previous episode, we covered uh, using the fully diminished seventh enharmonic process going from one key, minor key, to another minor key that are not directly related and not using the circle of fifths pivot chord style method of modulation. It's, it's very direct, it's chromatic. Um, but there, I have to make the disclaimer that uh, you really cannot do start doing these things until you start learning these really small moves one at a time to get up to like the level of Wagner's uh, style. You must learn chromatic harmony in key, and you must also learn every single key. Okay, that's there's just no way around that part. You you really have to know those things inside and out, and that's why I'm putting it up here on the screen. Another disclaimer and why I'm calling this basic chromatic modulation is we're only doing one move here. We're going to use the same uh, one chromatic move and harmonically respelled out of hundreds and hundreds of kind of moves you can do. Okay, so that's why we're covering one small, learn one small move at a time. This chord literally naturally occurs in four different harmonic minor modes respelled chromatic alteration. Okay. But the enharmonic process, so um, in B flat harmonic minor, it's the seven chord. The same set of notes occurs in G harmonic minor as its fully diminished seventh chord. In E minor, it's the same set of notes occurs as its fully diminished seventh chord. In C sharp harmonic minor, the same set of notes occurs as its fully diminished seventh chord. So. This is called the enharmonic process. They're chromatically altered or used in a way that can go to any one of these keys that are remote from each other. So in the last one, we learned to just use it once to go from G minor to B flat minor, okay? Now we're gonna use it to go to E minor and it's using that chromatic kind of movement. So um, enharmonically considering those same set of notes, uh, as occurring in the, in the other key, okay? And using that as your pivot. That's how you can look at it. So what I did was wrote out here a chain uh, chromatic sequence that you could use all the way to E minor, and you're going through very remote, distant keys from each other by doing this, okay? And it, and it uses a lot, it's just using that one chord. So here's the sequence. It's easy, it's very easy. B flat minor, it's, it's fully diminished seventh, C sharp minor, it's fully diminished seventh. E minor, okay, and you could actually repeat this process. And you'd actually go in a big circle when you start, if you started doing that, it would be in a never ending chromatic uh, sequence circle. So, my suggestion is to do stuff like this and practice this common and harmonic fully diminished seventh pivot chord, okay. And you could literally practice it like that because you just go in a big circle. But you notice you're traveling through very remote keys from each other. So you could do it like this. I mean, you could do it with some kind of pulse. And let's treat it like we're, we're modulated to E minor from G minor chromatically, okay? Well, there you go. A chromatic uh, sequence that went from G minor to E minor. Okay, via very remote uh, keys and and harmonically equivalent chords. So we could do it again. Let's do it again, in a different way, lower and starting really low. That second to last chord I'll explain later um, in another video in this series. But uh, there, um, there you go. You have we you've literally wandered through some. Uh, keys that are not even are not directly related to each other and ended up from going from G minor to B flat minor to uh, C sharp minor temporarily to uh, E minor okay so that's that's this is part this is the enharmonic chromatic process you're starting to see these chords as enharmonically equivalent to an a chord and a completely separate and even remote key and I didn't have to go to E minor. I could I could have landed on any of those keys that have that enharmonically equivalent fully diminished seventh chord. So remember now there's eight other uh, harmonic minor keys. So just think about that. That means 
you're going to have another set of uh, four harmonic minor keys that are going to have that same, not that same exact uh, fully diminished seventh chord, but a different fully diminished seventh chord related to those four separate keys and harmonically, and then another four. So this is what I mean. you got to do an enormous amount of uh, memorization, and you have to know keys completely and thoroughly because we're just touching the tip of the iceberg with one move in chromatic modulation. This is just one move. Think about that. And there's a whole ton of moves in chromatic modulation. And also remember that chromatic modulation is not the same as circle of fifth uh, pivot chord modulation because... Well, you're not using the circle of fifths by gradually increase by gradually increasing sharps or flats or decreasing using common chord pivot chords. You're not doing that anymore. You're going to fr oftentimes to very remote keys in your modulation very quickly, and in ways that has nothing to do with the circle of fifths. So.